like to call the special meeting the Elder City Council in order Thursday, October 24th, 2013, 7 p.m. Uh, number two on the agenda is a public hearing on question one to be voted on at the November 5th, 2013 municipal election. The question is, do you favor the withdrawal of the City of Ellsworth from Regional School Unit 24, subject to the terms and conditions of the withdrawal agreement dated March 21, 2013? The format this evening, um, we're going to start with 15 minutes, up to 15 minutes of opening remarks by the RSU first, and then the withdrawal committee. Uh, when we hit the 15 minute mark, if you see me kind of asking you to wrap up your remarks. We'll give you a little bit of latitude. Uh, then we'll have five minutes of uh, rebuttal time by each of the presenting sides. We'll have questions from counselors of either side. We'll have questions open it up for the public. Um, and then we'll have five or six minutes of closing remarks by each side. Um, anybody that is presenting I'd like you to come to the podium, state your name for the record. We are recording this broadcasting on our public access channel and streaming it live on our, our uh, city website. Uh, also, WMPBN uh, is here. That's another microphone. Uh, they're recording also. So, um, I would ask a couple things. Cell phones and pages either off or silent. Um, and we're adults, so let's not get into applauding conversations. Uh, this is fact-finding. Let's listen be respectful of each other, and uh, we'll get out of here before the Red Sox get eight runs ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, opening up is Superintendent Suzanne Lucas. Uh, the floor is yours. Good evening, city councilors, and those of you who are in the audience. A oh, nice turnout this evening. Um, it actually seems kind of strange that I'm opening the meeting this evening. Um, there are people in the audience who um, would like to advocate for withdrawal from RSU 24, and, and somehow it seems they should have their first crack at setting um, their case for withdrawal. However, I do appreciate the courtesy of the council for allowing the RSU to go first. Um, this evening, I would like to actually just talk about five things. Um, as you know, RSU 24 is a large school district by main standards, small by most other standards, about 2,500 students that serves 12 communities in Down East Maine. We have uh, 10 schools that we service, uh, two of them are high schools, one is a vocational center, and um, our student population runs around 2,500 students. In 2009, um, through state legislation, the RSU was formed as a consolidated district in order to provide a larger district format because the state of Maine had many, many small districts. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of that. Those of you who have been following withdrawal know all about consolidation law, about how the legislature put some things in motion and then did some backpedaling and changed a few things through legislation. But nonetheless, in 2009, all of the 12 communities in RSU 24 came together as one school district. Now, I understand, as everyone in the audience does, that consolidation left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. I mean, after all, the state came down and told people they had to consolidate. A lot of people, it was the last thing on their mind. Things were going just fine, thank you. We don't need to do this. However, um, instead of encouraging people to consolidate, the state actually took a stick rather than a carrot and told people there would be sanctions if they did not. So that was the birth of RSU 24. Um, not a joyous birth, but nonetheless a birth. So here we are five years later. And I want to just plead with you at the start of my presentation tonight to try to put aside the how this happened. And I understand very well that how consolidated happened, consolidation happened, especially in our communities, um, was not pleasant. But here we are five years later, and we've worked very hard to put together a school system that's serving the students of our communities very well. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Whether or not we should remain consolidated as a school district should stand on the merits of the kinds of things that are happening for children in the schools. It should rest on how we are managing taxpayer resources in order to accomplish that task. So, I'm going to begin by talking a little bit about finances, 
I know that that's something that's on everyone's mind um, whenever we talk about schools and school districts, especially in the state of Maine these days with the state funding formula, but it is. Um, people get concerned about how, how much is it going to cost and how much are we spending. So let me start there. There are some folks who understand that when you are a larger district, that you create some economies of scale. So for example, if you're purchasing 1,500 textbooks or 500 textbooks, if you're purchasing 140,000 gallons of heating oil or 50,000 gallons of heating oil, if you're purchasing 1,300 cases of paper or 400 cases of paper, there will be a difference in what you pay for those commodities. <coughs> Now, people who understand that agree that that's good management and it's important. Some people also are aware that when we started in the RSU, our food service programs in the 12 communities cost $422,262 in taxpayer money every year. The program had to be subsidized with your taxes. Five years into the RSU and our food service program is self-sustaining. To some folks, they consider this as a success. Now, I know that there are some folks who, for whom this is not that important. Um, I've actually heard some folks say, the savings are not that important, or other things are more important to me. <clears throat> so I want you to just think about this one piece. Suppose, as part of RSU 24, you're saving 20 cents a gallon on fuel oil, or 30 cents a gallon on fuel oil. Suppose that's the only savings you have. Or suppose you're saving $30,000 a year on subsidizing your food lunch program. I would ask you to think about what you would do with that twelve or 18000 or what you would do with that $30,000 that would make life better for the children in our schools. With $12,000, you know, you could buy an awful lot of library books. But $30,000, you could buy 60 iPads. That's enough iPads for children in three classrooms. Now, you also could turn the money back to the taxpayers, who, by the way, are really being strained. <coughs> I'm going to take a couple of minutes and show you a couple of graphs. Unfortunately, the state funding formula and how we fund schools in Maine is a little complicated, and I'm going to try to walk you through that um, and help you understand why what you've seen in Ellsworth has taken place over these five years. This particular graph, <coughs> this graph, uh, the top graph on my charts here, um, actually shows the individual costs per student of all of the communities in RSU 24, so 12 communities, and how much they're spending this year for the education of each student who resides in that community. If you're close enough to see the graph, and I'm afraid I'm blocking it from the council, um, you will see that Ellsworth spends well below the average for RSU 24 communities. In fact, there's only one community out of 12 that spends less per student than the city of Ellsworth. So, in terms of our 12 communities, Ellsworth is spending less per student. And some allegations that I've heard that Ellsworth is footing the bill for other communities and kids in other schools um, are just not supported by the facts. Now, in school funding, every school budget is really divided into two pockets. One part of that is the part of the budget that falls into the state funding formula. And that state funding formula is really complex. I'm going to get into that in a minute and explain it to you. But there is another part of our budget which is called the local only appropriation. Now the state funding formula covers a lot of things, but it doesn't cover everything. So it doesn't cover, you know, it might cover a soccer team, but it wouldn't cover three or four activities of the high school. It doesn't cover all of our transportation costs. It certainly doesn't cover any local debt service. So there is a part of the district's budget that is set by the district. And that's called the local only portion of the budget. The remainder of our budget is really set by the state and out of the hands of the RSU. So what I have here at the bottom of this chart is a graph. And I know it's too far away for most of you to read. But back in 2008, 2009, which was the year, the last year of the Ellsworth School Department before consolidation, the citizens of Ellsworth were raising money to pay for the state part of the budget, 
but they also were raising 1.5 million, actually 1,577,448 dollars on the local side of their budget. That's a part that your school board decided they would spend to help support programs. You can see there's a trajectory of spending. When the RSU started the first year of the RSU second year, the costs um, were quite a bit less. In fact, the first year of the RSU, they were about half the local, um, the local part of the budget. But in this present year, now we're talking five years later, the local only portion of the budget, the only part of the budget that the RSU has full control over, we are paying $1,348,767 in Eltworth. That's $228,000 less this year than you were paying for the local budget, the local part of the budget, back in 2008-2009. Now, let's talk about state funding, because that's where it gets kind of fun, fun. And that's where many of you are feeling that you um, are not seeing anything in your tax bills that says that we're saving money. And I do understand that. Um, Ellsworth and Hancock actually is another one of our communities where there's been tremendous increases in state valuation. And as a result of that, what's ended up happening is that they've had to raise a lot more money in order to get state aid. So uh, under essential programs and services, this, the formula for the state says, with 1,000 students, you need to spend X amount of money. Then they determine how much of that money you will put in and how much the state will give you. So back in 2008-2009, the state said if Ellsworth pays $6,148,000, we will give them $3,435,000. So actually, about 50%, a little more than 50%. In 1314, the present year we're in, the state says if Ellsworth raises $8,589,000, we will give you two million four hundred ninety-five thousand. So you raise two million more, and the state will give you nine hundred thousand less. Not a really good deal. But you need to understand that that is set by the state formula, and it is not something that our two twenty-four can alter. It hits all of our communities. It hits them differently, and it hits them at different times. In the city of Ellsworth, the um, State valuation increased by $120,450,000 in the last five years. Now, that's not the state valuation. That's how much it increased over a five-year period. That's why you're seeing yourselves paying a whole lot more on that state side of the budget. So, let's see. This chart actually just shows that to you. Um, it shows you what you were paying, that, what your state valuation was. It shows um, the 940,000 less in state aid, the 2.4 million more you have to pay to get that state aid, and the 228,000 less in local only dollars that you're paying this year over what you were paying in 08 09. So we're going to leave finance for the time being because there's a couple other things I want to make a point about. Um, in putting together the RSU, we really worked very hard to become organized to do the work of running a school district. We have terrific staff. We have incredible professionals who are very skilled and very capable. One of the things we're able to do as a larger district is to have more specialization. Now, some people find that distasteful. But we are running a $36 million a year business. And it is important to run that business well. So for example, we have a human resources individual who is trained to deal with workers' compensation, unemployment, labor laws. We have a technology department that's highly specialized. We still have tech integrators who go into the classroom and work with teachers and students. But we have people who are specially trained to repair Mac computers or PCs or to deal with networks and servers. If Ellsworth leaves, it is not that they cannot recreate these things. They can. But there will be a cost, and there will be a time frame for creating that. And there will be a redundancy. You already have those services provided to you. Why would you want to spend money and time and training to recreate 
specialization that you already have available to you. One of the areas of redundancy that very rarely gets mentioned is that we presently do all the grant writing for the federal grants, and there are a lot of them, Title I, Title II, IDEA, Perkins Funds, federal lunch subsidies, and all of those grants, every single one of them, requires a whole lot of work. Each grant has to be written, it has, there has to be a budget, the finances have to be uploaded and reported on a regular basis. In addition to that, um, project reports need to be given at the end of the year. Right now we do that in our office for 10 schools. If Elser School Department withdraws, they will have to do that for themselves. So the work that we're doing, one application for us, for a whole lot of money, is exactly the same amount of work for one application in another district. And there's more than one application. So again, a redundancy. So now to the most important part. People say, and I've heard this said, in fact some of you even have a website, about the quality of education since the Ellsworth schools have become part of RSU 24. So I'm going to present to you some information about what has been happening in the Ellsworth schools. And I think you will be impressed. On the state and national level, quality of education is rated by how kids do on test scores. Now, I don't agree with that wholeheartedly, but it is one indicator that things are going pretty well for kids because, after all, our business is learning. So what I have here in front of you are the trajectory of scores on the SAT for Ellsworth High School over the five years of the RSU. And I think if you can see them from where you sit, you can't really see the numbers, I'm sure, but you can see this is 2009 and this is 2013 and we definitely are showing improvement. Our kids are performing higher now than they were at the start of the RSU. Likewise, on nationally normed tests rather than state normed state norm tests, our kids are doing just great. Uh, every year we give the NWA, we have to give it three times a year to follow student progress and see how they're doing. And you can see here that Ellsworth Elementary Middle School at the top is showing steady growth. And likewise, the ninth and 10th graders at the high school who take this test are also showing growth over time. So academically, we are seeing growth. Now, are we pleased with these results? Do we think that this is great? Do we want to run a flag up the flagpole for them? No, we do not. Because we know our kids can do better, and we're working hard to see that happen. But nonetheless, there is progress happening. Now, one more thing about ed programming. Since the start of the RSU, we have renewed almost all of our academic programming. We have put in a new social studies program. We have had teachers working tooth and nail in science, and this year that's going down into the elementary school with folks working with the university and planning science uh, instruction. We have a brand new writing program, K-5, in the elementary schools. We have an updated math program in the elementary schools <coughs> that's tied to the Common Core standards. In our middle schools and high schools, we have springboard math and ELA, programs developed by the college board that will allow students to begin in sixth grade working on materials that will carry them right through high school and allow them to have a seamless transition to high school. But it's not just about educational <coughs> programs. It's about quality of training for teachers, and this is something that is at risk if people withdraw from the RSU. By pooling our professional development resources, we have been able to bring in high quality training for teachers, not only bring it in, but bring those folks back several times during the year to help support teachers in implementation. Any smaller district would have to pay just as much to do that. And for us to have to do it, and for you to have to do it, and for Hanover to have to do it, is really a redundancy, and quite frankly, it's something that will not happen to the same degree. In terms of other initiatives we have underway, our teachers are involved in the main content literacy project, the main arts assessment initiative, the physical science partnership with the University of Maine, the elementary sciences partnership. We also have instructional rounds that we've been working with, developed by Harvard University. Our students at Ellsworth High School beginning this year have the opportunity for dual enrollment at Fort, the University of Maine Fort Kent. That means that their high school coursework will get them college credit as well. And the HCTC staff is working on a planning grant to be able to have the Bridges program. The Bridges program will allow 
vocational school students who are so motivated to actually complete a full year of college while they're in high school and complete their associate's degree in their, you know, their particular training area in one year's time after high school. We've also added programs during this time frame, three programs at HCDC, Welding, Early Childhood, and Law Enforcement. We've added alternative education programs at both high schools. We've um, added Marine Pathways at Sumner High School and Visual and Performing Arts Academy at Ellsworth High School. More importantly, the field of education is changing. We are under tremendous pressure. Our present eighth graders need to graduate from high school having accomplished all of the standards that are called the Common Core Standards. It's a tremendous amount of work. We're working our teachers really hard and they're working really hard and, and I really appreciate that. But we can't let up on it because the kids who are in eighth grade right now have to master those standards or they will not receive a high school diploma four years from now. The work that we're doing in the district is aimed in that direction, is focused, is planned, we have a path, we have a plan. Should you begin a new school district, you will have to be redesigning your own path to that. And believe me, it's taken us a couple years to get to where we are in the planning of this implementation. I would hate to see the students of Ellsworth have to um, be held, put on hold for in, uh, implementation of these standards because of a change of school district and new planning that would have to be done to get the work accomplished. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you for holding this. Thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, seen a lot of numbers at this point, and a lot of those um, go to the RSU as a whole. What we've been concerned about for the last 18 months is Ellsworth as a an entity, and what it has actually done to and for Ellsworth. So I'd like to back up just a little bit. I don't want to repeat a lot of what uh, Ms. Lucas has uh, already said because a lot of it is very factual uh, as far as the state and what the state is required, et cetera, and how the state uh, basically <coughs> requires us to raise a certain amount of money. But all true. What we want to talk about <clears throat> is why we got to the point we are based on the request of the voters in Ellsworth to prepare a document that is negotiated between the RSU and the city of Ellsworth that could be submitted to Augusta, the Department of Education, that would allow us to put to the voters, which we're going to be doing next, uh, next to or week from Tuesday, November 5th, to get out of the RSU. When we first started, it had a lot to do with taxes because our taxes have gone up so much. Just under seven million dollars we've contributed to the RSU in this period. That consisted of the increase in the taxes that uh, we had to raise, state mandated, as well as about a million four that we turned over that we had in a reserve fund. That money is all gone, it's been spent, uh, et cetera. So as we got into things, we found you know, there isn't a lot that we're going to do about reducing taxes per se. But what we did find out is that those taxes were going into this large pot and being distributed throughout the RSU, as it was with each one of the communities that had to pay their share. It was distributed to go throughout the RSU. And so if, if you start to look at it, and the assertion that, that has been made that the RSU has saved $9.5 million in the course of the uh, four years, I'm not going to disagree with that. I can see how they figured it. I'm not going to disagree with it. 
But what cannot be disagreed with either is the fact that our taxes have gone up just sub of seven million dollars. So if we've had to come up with an additional seven and they saved nine and a half, where did our seven go? Well, we've got more students. Yes, we do have more students. But as Susan Lucas said, we are the second lowest cost per student to educate. We should be. We've got the largest facilities that get spread over a larger number of students. Our classrooms are 20, 22, 23. You take one teacher teaching that class, you spread that cost to that teacher over 23 students versus going to one of the outlying uh, schools where the classes are much smaller, but still one teacher. They built up the salaries in the teachers in the other communities while restricting to some degree the amount of salaries in for the Ellsworth teachers. They've tried to uh, centralize and organize the education. That's great for a lot of communities. They come to Ellsworth to high school better prepared, but has it done anything for Ellsworth? So as we got into it, we ended up really looking at what we call a three-legged stool, those three things that we're concerned about. One is taxation, one is local control, and the last is quality of education. Now everybody got onto this thing, well, you're all about taxation, you're all about lowering taxes. No, we're not. We understand the state sets our uh, property values, they set our mill rate, and we're told we need to raise X number of dollars. That's true. We're not going to get away with it, and it's not going to change whether we're in the RSU or whether we're out of the RSU. Now we go to the local control. If we get out of the RSU, those taxes then stay in elsewhere. The taxes we, we pay in excess of 50% of our tax bill goes to education. It's going to stay in Ellsworth. With a local control with our own school board, where people can come in and talk about what they would like to have, what the teachers' concerns are, what parents' concerns are, what students' concerns are, and that local uh, school board can make the decision as to how those dollars are spent to improve the quality of education in our schools. We're not having it determined by a 14-member board, which we've got three members on. That's how we would like to improve the education quality. So we've gone into it, we're looking at three things. Taxation, local control, and quality of education. Now there's going to be a number of people that are going to speak with regard to things that have happened in the interim. 20-some teachers uh, leaving uh, in the last couple of years. That's tough turnover. There's a variety of things people I'm, I'm not going to get that. I'm going to burn up all of our 15 minutes. What I'd like to do is just take a moment and, and take us to the end result. Let's say that we get a positive vote and we get the appropriate number of people out on uh, November 5th. What do we expect to have occur? Well, we drill down on the three R's, and it had to be an educator that did this, because it's reading, writing, and I think it's arithmetic rather than arithmetic. <laughs> but it's the three R's. So what we said is we want to reassess and implement educational standards, policies, and practices to align with the specific needs of Ellsworth students and staff to ensure success is paramount. Let's build a school that we want to attract students to from the outlying areas. Right now, we have uh, kids going down to Mount Desert for high school. We have kids going over to Blue Hill, John Baps. Hell, we've even got some, I talked to one parent today, has them up at uh, CVA at, at Sugarloaf because they ski some in the winter. So they pull the kids and put on two families. I know we've done that. Why shouldn't Ellsworth, the seat of Hancock County, have a school that kids want to come to, to get their education. That's our desire. The second R, restore. We'd like to restore parental and community involvement in, with the development and delivery of local school board policies, programs, and planning. 
any chase that's here in the audience now, and there may be other uh, prior uh, school mem uh, board members of the Ellsworth school system. Kenny's told me so many times about how many meetings they've had with teachers. The parents have come in and filled the audience to discuss issues in the school system. They talked about it. I've heard from the other side that has said, yeah, we had all kinds of discussions. We didn't always get what we wanted, but we came to a mutual agreement with what the uh, management could handle and what was good for the uh, students and uh, the school system. It's not happening today, folks. We want to restore that. We want to retain the tax dollars that are paid by Ellsworth residents and subsequent uh, state subsidies for the education and the benefit of the Ellsworth students. Now, if we take a look at those tax dollars one more time before I have uh, Don and Tammy uh, come up. If we are spending almost $7 million additional and the RSU has saved $9.5 million. Where have our tax dollars gone? It's not here in Ellsworth. Tammy? You and Dan? Uh, Don? My name is Tammy Moat. I just want to preface um, by stating that um, I'm speaking as a citizen, as a taxpayer, rather than the finance director for the city of Ellsworth. So. My name is Dawn Hudson, and I am an Ellsworth resident and parent, and I'm also on the school board for representing Ellsworth on RSU 24. I don't think. Um, I don't think anybody disputes that RC24 hasn't done the very best that it could do with the program and the um, parameters that we that have been given to do this. I think it's a daunting and overwhelming task to try to run um, so many schools and so many um, different towns and municipalities over such a widespread area. And um, Certainly, the way to deliver the best product to uh, students and to any organization is to be able to specialize the most and the best you can on any one group to give them the most attention and the most effort possible. And I strongly feel going through the year that I've, I've had on the board and talking with the teachers that I've talked to and other people in the schools, and um, I just don't believe that this is the best fit for Ellsworth. Uh, our teachers are not happy. We're losing them in large numbers, especially in the high school. I think the number is 21 over this uh, past two years. And for whatever reason they leave, whether it's to take administrative positions um, or retirement or to because their contracts were not renewed or whatever the reason, the turnover is too high. For me as a parent, that's not enough consistency in my children's education in that one school. Um, and when our teachers are telling me that they're unhappy and begging me to help them to make changes to, to go back to the Ellsworth school system the way it was before. I think that speaks volumes. They're educating our kids, our students, and if they're not happy, then they're not best equipped to do their very, very best job that they can. And I think it's our job to hear them and assist them and help them to do the best they can. But, but the money is what the money is. We're going to spend what we're going to spend on education. But we certainly are contributing enough tax dollars now to do this on our own. We talk about collaborative efforts. Um, the majority of that collaboration or the majority of that bulk purchasing comes from our schools. We're the big schools. And we have a big city that we can collaborate and share costs with when it comes to products and um, supplies and bulk fuel purchases and um, snow removal and all these things. We have those already at our disposal. We, we, we can also collaborate. There's nothing prohibiting us 
from collaborating with the other area schools if curriculum is their concern and having a, a consistent curriculum throughout the, the children's education leading them up to high school so everyone's on the same level. There's nothing that's stopping us from doing all those things. So if everyone's concern is that portion, we, this doesn't prohibit us from doing that. And we aren't talking about changing every teacher in our school and every administrator in our school. We're talking about taking control back and being able to give them the support and the help directly from our citizens to our teachers for our students. Um, there's no reason why we can't continue with this wonderful programming and the, and the great services that we're giving, but we can make sure that it's what our teachers need and what our students need. And I think that needs to be our focus, not what's best for the district, what's best, best for Ellsworth. And we can certainly do all we can to help the other communities, but not at the cost of taking away from our students. So as you all know, I love numbers. So, DRSU has made the claim that the $9.5 million, I want to show everyone how those numbers were calculated. Can everyone see this? Okay, so in 2009, all of the municipalities that made up DRSU had a budget of $33,693,060. In 2010, it was $32 million. So what they've done is taken 2010 and subtracted it from 2009, leaving a $1.3 million savings. The next year, they took 2011, subtracted it from 2009. So basically, it, it's these all subtracted from 2009, giving a $9.5 million savings. It's a cumulative savings. So, in order to compare apples to apples, I've done the exact same thing and have calculated it using their methodology. So, in 2009, the taxpayers in Ellsworth, can you hear it? Okay, be Vanna. Vanna? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, in 2009, the Ellsworth taxpayer's share of the education budget was $7.7 .7 million. In 2010, it was $7.2 million, $527,000 deduction. I'll explain that a little bit. In 2011, $446,000. So I went back to that 2009 number. Well, that was a total cumulative additional cost of $5.2 million. That did not include the uh, Ellsworth School Fund balance that we had to give to the RSU when we entered the RSU in 2010. So overall, it's cost the Ellsworth taxpayers an additional $6.6 .6 million cumulatively. <clears throat> so, and we understand, we understand that the state does dictate um, what we have to pay based on the uh, mill rate that they set and based on the city's valuation. What we're saying, what we're asking, is that you take all of that money and spend it in Ellsworth, not to all the other RSU communities. And one other point we talked about when Suzanne talked about the savings the, um, that was less this year that we passed on to the taxpayer, I think it's important to know that we subsidized that budget from our, um, from our undesignated fund balance this year. I think it was 2.6. $2.4 million that we, we put in to the budget from um, the RSU's undesignated fund balance to, to keep that, um, yeah, to help offset we were <coughs> passing on to the taxpayer. So that's not exactly reflective of savings. It's reflective of using the undesignated fund balance to offset the, the cost that was passed on. And an additional revenue stream, basically, to help reduce the cost to the taxpayers as opposed to savings, per se. Okay. I don't think so. There's lots more, but, but no. <laughs> we have three minutes. The we have three minutes, well Tammy. Um, One thing I do want to say that 12 communities make up, um, obviously, the RSU. Um, there are some communities that don't receive any state subsidies. However, the city of Ellsworth received 65 
65.67% of the, oh, excuse me, 65.78% of the RSU subsidies. However, um, Ellsworth has 42.84% of the students. And there, and, and if cost savings is our is a big concern and something that we're worried about, it is important to understand that not everything everything may not stay the same in the RSU going forward. This is the year that the RSU will talk about um, a new cost sharing formula uh, based on the last census, and so there may be an increase coming soon to Ellsworth, given that we have a large population of the students. We may begin to take on, depending on how that cost formula is worked out, it may end up being that we <coughs> may share a larger burden than we have in the past of the RSU's budget. And there are talks also of additional administrative um, positions that they are interested in, in bringing on board. So there are potential, other potential increases, um, and we don't, we won't necessarily have that additional designated fund balance in future years to offset what we were able to offset this year. So Ellsworth may be receiving, you know, sort of on the losing end of that in future years with the RSU budget. It's just things to consider that are out there as possibilities. At least if it's ours, we control a little more of what we do and we don't do ourselves. I heard a ding. No. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Format that I put out at the beginning is um, five minutes rebuttal. If Superintendent Lucas has any clarifications or additions you'd like to present. Thank you very much. Just a couple quick clarifications. Um, first of all, I think Mark misunderstood this graph that I put up here. Maybe I didn't explain it fully enough. This is not a spending graph, this is a funding graph. This says that Ellsworth is putting in this amount per child. It is not what's actually being spent in the schools. However, we talk about what's spending in the schools. I know I've heard it said that you think that Ellsworth is paying for other schools. But through the withdrawal agreement, if you actually look at the um, appendices to that agreement, you will see that Ellsworth will be paying back to the district certain amounts of money for things like capital improvements, uh, for technology and equipment. And the reason Ellsworth would be paying that money back to the district if you should withdraw, is because during the first five years of the RSU, the RSU actually spent more money in Ellsworth disproportionately than it did in other communities. That, that formula that we used to set what would be due upon withdrawal was really based upon the percentage of the district that um, each community has and how much of that Ellsworth actually received or paid. So for example, in capital improvements, we had a huge project at HCTC, I think it was $90,000 to replace a uh, heating problem there. And so uh, of that, 67.1% of that was paid by other people in the communities, other communities, 32% um, by folks here in Ellsworth. And so Ellsworth would be paying back the balance of that capital improvement. But when we actually looked at it district-wide, Ellsworth actually was on the receiving end of additional expenses, expenses rather than on the giving end. Um, secondly, I would like to just show a graph quickly. It's really um, a clarification. Tammy, Tammy's right in what she said about the $9.5 million in savings. But I want to be really clear. Um, the RSU has always said that that $9.5 million comes if, if indeed our 12 communities, and this is an if, if they took what they were spending in 08, 09 and continued to spend exactly that same amount for five years, what would the communities have spent on education? And then it takes the actual approved budgets that you folks voted on on those five years and does a comparison of those. So that's where the 9.5 million comes from. And that's why in some things we've written, we said at least 9.5 because we don't know that every one of those 12 communities could continue to have paid exactly what it paid for education. I mean, it's five years later. Some of them may have had to raise those costs. So it is a cumulative number. 
It is a comparison to what was being paid before the RSU. And I suppose in that sense, um, you know, we, we don't know what would have happened had there not been an RSU. But it's just an indicator that indeed um, the total budgets of our district have been less. Superintendent, your foot is wrapped up in the court. I don't want you to take your head away. No, I'll be fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I have just one other comment that I'd like to make. Um, this is kind of interesting. Um, I, I've heard Mark speak a couple times now and about having school board meetings where everybody comes and participates and gets involved and, and what have you. And, you know, as a superintendent, I would love to have those meetings too. Um, on occasion, we do have them. People come. People want to discuss an item. But that's not generally the case. In fact, in our society, people don't usually have the time to get up in the evening, climb in their car, and drive down to City Hall or down to the school department for a meeting. So it's not that usual that we have large crowds at our, our board meetings. But I have heard Mr. Rossborough say a number of times that in the Ellsworth School Department that was different. And actually someone in my office heard that the other day and came back to the office and said, you know, I don't think that's so. I, I was at those meetings and there weren't very many people at those meetings. So they actually pulled out some records of the Ellsworth School Department and showed that the attendance at those meetings was really no different from the attendance at the meetings at the RSU board meetings. Now, again, I'm not advocating that. I would love to have meetings where everybody came and everyone participated. But to say that in those days, lots of people showed up, the meetings were full of people who wanted to talk about educational issues, um, the record from the Ellsworth School Department does not support that. Most of the meetings had one visitor, no visitors, a couple reporters, um, pretty much the same as what's happening in the RSU. Thank you. <coughs> understand the, the child uh, at all. Uh, we have been told repeatedly uh, that Ellsworth has a lower cost per student uh, than most of the others. We are the second lowest per student cost and we should be. We had five schools previously that we were heating, put electricity in, had teachers in. Two of those schools are gone. The year before or the year we went into the RSU, the Moore School went, and the Knowlton School went. We built a new school that is LEAK certified, Silver LEAK certified. That basically says that it was built to standards to conserve heat and electricity, uh, that it was an efficient school. Now we have got the, uh, the middle school, high school, and HCTC, uh, the Volk Center. We should have the lowest cost. It surprises me we're not the lowest. Second, when we started uh, talking about uh, meeting pres uh, pres uh, presence, etc., I would defer to Kenny Shea, who sat on a board uh, for many years, and the number of teachers that I see here that were also uh, working at that point and or, and are still and or are still working that have told us that they went to those meetings, they had those discussions, and they didn't always agree, but they came out as feeling as though they'd been heard and had a negotiated uh, settlement on things, that, that they came to some agreement. I, I made a note here, return of funds, and I, to be quite frank, I can't remember what it was that you were saying about the, the uh, return of funds. The state subsidy funds, when we start looking at the state subsidy, keep in mind, we can talk about uh, communities getting, not getting, uh, et cetera. That's going to happen whether we're in the RSU or not. So if there are communities outside of Ellsworth that are not currently getting those funds because they haven't raised the appropriate amount of dollars, where did that seven or six, six, six? My figure was a little bit different than Tammy's. I was just under seven million. Where did that go? Unless somebody knows a little different math than I, 
I might, I've got to assume that it went to the other communities. And when I talk with teachers, etc., and they tell me what they've had, what they've been able to get um, approved for, whether it be computers, iPads, you name it, strong feeling that they are going more to the other schools because they didn't have as much as Ellsworth had originally. Programs being brought up in other schools, other communities, because they were not up to speed with Ellsworth. I'm going to leave, leave it at that for, the, for now, just from a time standpoint. Uh, Michelle, would you like to speak, please? Well, I don't know. You've got about a minute and a half, two minutes on this one. Or you want to have it for public comment afterwards? Okay. All right, we've gone through those two sessions. Um, as is normal in this chamber, um, I will open up questions. Um, for the counselors, to any of the presenters, um, if you have any. Okay. Um, be recognized by the chair, go up and state your name, and uh, we'll we normally give people three to five minutes. Um, so we'll open it up to the public, anyone with questions or comments. Good evening. My name is Patricia Bowles, and I'm a lifelong resident of Ellsworth. My husband and I are both graduates of Ellsworth High School, as are my, as are my four children. I was involved in the Ellsworth school system for over 20 years as a substitute teacher and coach, and I have attended many school board meetings, as I'm sure a lot of people remember. Unlike the opinion voiced by the Ellsworth American, I do not believe Local control is a thing of the past. I strongly believe it is our civic duty to continue to fight for the best education possible for our children, regardless of what the state and federal government dictates. After listening to the RSU's position and reading their comments in the papers over the past few weeks, I have come to the conclusion that the benefits of being in the RSU are solely addressed to the other towns, not elsewhere. Let me give you a few examples. The RSU brags that they now have their own human resource person and IT person. Elsworth had a finance manager who also handled human resource, and we had an IT person. In fact, both these people now work as a human resource person and IT person in the RSU. We had an assistant superintendent curriculum coordinator. She is now the assistant superintendent for the RSU. We had a first food service manager who was the food service manager for the Irish Show. We had a special ed director and we had a director of adult education. We do not have an accounting manager or an assistant director of special education as the Irish Show does, and we probably will not need to fill those positions if we withdraw. We also do not have a central office payroll of $1.1 million, of which Ellsworth is paying approximately 370000 this does not include office assistant salaries or approximately $7 a month rent for offices. This leads me to another point. How is Ellsworth saving on administrative costs as the RSU claims? The RSU stated that they have saved money by cost sharing. As Don mentioned, Ellsworth was cost sharing before the RSU. We cost shared with the city on such things as buying bulk, snow removal, and use of city garage. We also shared services with Union 92. During the withdrawal negotiations, Ellsworth offered to continue sharing services for two years with the RSU. This offer was turned down. The superintendent mentioned that HCTC's furnace needed to be replaced at cost of $90,000. She wanted to know how Ellsworth could have afforded to fix that on their own. We had a reserve fund of, of $1.4 million when we joined the RSU, which we gave to them. Emergencies is what a reserve fund is for. 
Staff development and teacher training is another program the RSU claims it added. Owlsworth always had excellent professional development days. They too got national presenters to come in, which was sometimes shared with Union 92. It was noted that RSU brought national trainers to Maine, to Owlsworth. It was not mentioned that the money used for this was part of the $1.5 million they received by accepting a grant from the Federal School Improvement Funds because Ellsworth High School was a low achieving high school in 2010. The common theme here is Ellsworth had all these programs in place before the RSU. Now the rest of the towns have them with Ellsworth's money. I fully accept and understand the desires of the staff of the central office to defend their work <coughs> and, protect, and protect their salaries. However, our focus needs to remain on what is the best interest of the students and citizens of Ellsworth. This is what I see the RSU has done for Ellsworth. They made EHS a Title I school and accepted $1.5 million from the government. Because of the conditions set forth in the grant, we fired our principal and hired a new principal with no prior experience as a principal. In three years, the high school still does not meet state standards, has lost students to other high school, has had a mass exodus of teachers, is experiencing low teacher morale, and is a school left with no pride. The RSU has raised the salaries of teachers in the other towns and left Ellsworth teachers with no raises and some, and some making less money than they did before. There is no consideration for a fact that a fourth grade teacher at Peninsula School teaches 16 students, while a fourth grade teacher in Ellsworth teaches 25. They must make equal pay. Think about how much money this must have cost the district to raise these salaries and they're still under negotiations for a contract for the school year, which I'm sure their insurance and things like that are going to need to be raised too. The communities could not afford these raises before the RSU. How do they afford it now? It must be because of the cost sharing that Ms. Lucas talks about. Ellsworth has had a 25% increase in the cost of education since joining the RSU. The business manager of the RSU can skew the figures any way he wants. The common sense tells you that Ellsworth has not seen a huge saving since joining the RSU. I would conclude that when the RSU talks about what we have gained as an RSU, they are not talking about Ellsworth. My question is, what good has the RSU done for Ellsworth? Old age. <laughs> How I feel about the RSU. <laughs> no, just you know, I, I, the statistics that the superintendent gave you a moment ago. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Jim Pendergast. For those of you who don't know me, I'm, I'm just a citizen that cares about the Ellsworth community and our schools, and that's why I embarked on this. Uh, project of trying to withdraw us from the RSU. But the, the superintendent, um, I have no doubt that you found these statistics that said that the school board participation was at minimal. I have no doubt about that. But the fact of the matter is, what we don't understand is, how many people in this room can name me one or two of the RSU school board members? How many people in here can name the three that are from Ellsworth? The fact of the matter is, it, the fact of the matter is, I can only name one, <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that when we had it under local control, we knew who those school board members were. We could call them on the phone. We didn't have to go to the meetings. We could talk to them on the street. We could interact with them. The teachers could interact with them. We don't have that anymore. The superintendent indicated to me one night, she said, Jim, you have 33% of the vote, but it's a weighted vote. Is that true? It's a weighted vote, so there's more. I said, really? So every taxpayer in the city of Ellsworth heads off and goes down to Sumner High School for their budget hearing, and we were adamantly op opposed to it. What happens to it? We only have three votes, whether it's weighted or not. 
it can pass for the benefit of somebody else. In her own words, at a public hearing that we had the other day, she said it was pooled money. And Mark Rossborough said that's exactly right, it's pooled money. Everything is, in, everything is there for everyone else, including Ellsworth. She's indicated that it's going to be difficult for inventories to buy this, to buy that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel to do that. You can enter into other places where you can have, have better buying power. I remember one time when I was sitting on the board of directors at the Ellsworth Hospital and Quorum, who was a managing uh, company that wanted to come in and manage the hospital, they said one of the things that we can do is we can save you money on inventories. Really. Perhaps they did. But the manager downstairs in the supply room said, Jim, we can get these discounts all over the place. That's really not the crux of the matter. So I would, I would take exception to that. One of the things I've known, I, I'm gonna, I want to ask you if this is true. We needed to fix our track up here to the tune of $35,000. Other schools use it. The RSU members use it. Did the, did the RSU deny that expenditure? No, it did not. It was not even brought up at our budget hearings. Really? And it could have been brought up at our budget meeting when... Tammy, was, Tammy, was that, was that number brought up to the RSU to, to fix our track up there for 35000 Do you know? Anyway, who paid for it? City of Ellsworth paid for it. Sumner uses it. So you see, sometimes what's good for the goose is not good for the gander. If we want to control our destiny with our kids and be masters of our own fate, we need to get out of this RSU. And you know what? If you read the newspaper today, you will see that we're not the only ones. We're not standing alone here. There's other communities that want to get out as well. And why? They're dissatisfied with it. The costs are high. The pooled money, in her words. And I, for one, would encourage you to vote yes to withdraw from the RSU. Thank you. Good evening. My name is um, Connie Sisson, and I'm here to share my thoughts about voting yes to withdraw from the RSU. I recently retired from 28 years of teaching after spending nearly all of them here in Ellsworth. Based on the feeling of the educational environment that I felt at the Knowlton School and the accessibility to the entire teaching staff and administration, I found the warm community spirit and um, of the school to be very inviting. I wanted to be a part of this education system. I wanted to work with this small, um, close-knit group and be part of this school that was driven to grow professionally and um, provide the best opportunities for the students and their parents. It was a community filled with pride and expectation. We, as a group of two or three teachers uh, per grade level at that time, uh, worked closely to examine our practices and shape the programs um, delivered to our students. Representatives from grade levels regularly met with the curriculum coordinator, discussing curriculum issues, raising concerns about what or how much to teach. Decisions could and often would be made immediately. Then along came the RSU plan. No longer were we meeting with three or four first grade teachers. We were meeting with larger numbers of first grade teachers from all the schools representing the RSU. No longer were we experiencing the same community feel, vested in our students, interacting with our family of colleagues within grade levels, as well as across grade levels. In an RSU consolidation environment, <clears throat> curriculum optimization and development is no longer just a walk down the hall for a heartfelt 
meaningful huddle with a colleague. It is now a big process that has no media feedback loop, just accountability to nationally derived standards and test frequencies out of control. Centralizing bigger is better. Really? Good evening. I'm Michelle DeWitt, and I'm a former board member for the Ellsworth um, R. Shield, uh, the representative for Ellsworth. That, um, Tammy, um, we had chatted, and she asked if um, I thought I might like to speak, and I said no. And then I got thinking about things last night at home, and uh, I was up until almost 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I guess what I really um, uh, struggle with as someone who has lived in this community and has had kids go through the school system and um, felt like I did some time for my public su service duty on the board. Um, I, was, I, at last night when I was thinking about it, what are the things that, you know, bugged me? <laughs> and um, it bugs me that this corporation, this $36 million business, as, dark, as uh, Mrs. Lucas said tonight, um, drives everything. Um, I have been, you know, quoted <laughs> um, saying that, you know, we're a corporation, we're not a community anymore. We are a big, big store, big store prices, big store, you know, curriculum, big store, you know, those kind of things. And yeah, there are savings with big store purchases, um, but at what cost? Um, personally, and these are my only personal feelings, um, some of my experiences with being on the board, um, no one, um, it does, I don't have a feeling that everyone knows everyone. We touched on that a little bit tonight about how you walk into a room and there's, you know, I mean, there's 600, em over 600 employees. We talked about that. You know, you, you need um, a big corporation, business, that's how you need to run it with that many employees. Um, but really what opened my eyes um, to this whole process was the withdrawal process that we went through as a, as a board member and as a community. Um, to be honest with you, I was on the fence about withdrawal. And when I was asked to be a, um, a member of the withdrawal committee because the other two Ellsworth um, representatives declined. <laughs> um, so I drew the short straw, as they say. And I was on the fence a little bit about it because I was new. More, you know, I had a year or so under my belt, but was still feeling the waters, still feeling how things were going. Um, my how things changed very quickly once the other board members learned that I was the withdrawal representative who was appointed, by the way, okay, um, to the withdrawal committee. Um, I was, um, let me get to my notes here. So um, I just want the city of, you know, the citizens to know um, how I was treated personally. Um, I tried not to take it personally because I, I know people were worried. They worried about their, their own towns, their own situations, what it was going to cost them. Um, but mind you, I was still on the fence about it. And um, to walk into the first withdrawal meeting and to be told that I was not going to be allowed to be part of the executive session, voted out by the other board members to not be allowed a, a part of that executive session for fear that I was going to sway or tell secrets to the withdrawal committee. I'm not really sure. You know, I understand it was a lawyer decision, um, but it, it changed the way I felt about the board in my position. And um, so I, I began to look at things differently. Um, there was a lot of emotion and anger about the withdrawal process. Um, I just want to just quickly um, talk about, um, I just 
Patty, actually, the points that I was going to talk about, Patty did a good job about it. Um, I didn't feel, I felt kind of like the en enemy in the, en in the camp. You know, I couldn't, you know, I was, people weren't talking to me anymore. You know, it was just, it was awful. It was an awful experience, which led to my resignation because I no longer could feel like I could really do what I needed to do on the board. Um, just a couple more minutes. Um, I just want you to keep in mind that we are a corporation. If you don't think about anything else, think about the fact that this, I just want to touch on the numbers that Patty said. This is one thing that's always bugged me about this, even before I became a board member, is that the central office was supposed to streamline and become less expensive to run, it was supposed to be less, you know, that was where the cuts were supposed to happen. They did happen a little bit, people retired, there were some things, but I started doing some numbers last night because I was on the budget committee, I was the chair for two years, so I had those numbers at home. And um, for a total of um, 12 positions, which includes superintendent and assistant superintendent, but these are 12 positions, all supervising positions. It costs the district $1,037,000. And that's with the lease of the building and utilities. That's all I did. I didn't, and I did their um, health care, um, their insurances. Those are rough numbers. David would laugh at me if I was up, knowing that I was up here running numbers because he all knows, we all know this. But what little bit of math I did, um, to me that's a substantial amount of money to be spending on super, supervision position. Mind you, those don't include um, three positions of supervisor for maintenance, the IT staff that goes along with that um, supervising position, and, um, and any of the support staff that's at the central office and their health benefits. So, in closing, um, my experience on the board was not a positive one. It was at the beginning. Um, unfortunately, the withdrawal process changed that for me. Um, I don't, I, I, I obviously am for withdrawal. Um, I feel that Ellsworth does not have a voice. Um, when you sit in a room full of um, 14 members um, that all have their own agendas, it's hard to get something accomplished. So, thanks. My name is Carrie Alley. Um, growing up in Maine, I never thought our schools would be run like a corporation that cares more about policy and procedure than about our kids. My daughter is just beginning her journey as a product of this corporation, which is failing to meet federal and state benchmarks. So in essence, our product would never make it to the shelves as a company. If this corporation was an investment in my portfolio, I would absolutely sell. But in this case, it's not an option for me. I must continue to invest regardless of product quality. That being said, I would like to urge this community to focus on that product, our children, the future of our city, where as investors we have input on how to better our children's education without having to gain approval from 11 other municipalities who may not put the education of our children first. These are our investments, our tax dollars, our children, our schools, and our community. And I've also received a letter from a current teacher in an Ellsworth school who would like to remain anonymous as to not suffer any repercussions for speaking out in favor of withdrawal. Dear citizens of Ellsworth, I am a teacher of an Ellsworth school employed by RSU 24. I am very concerned about continuing being a part of this over overwhelming, unappreciative RSU. I have worked in the district for 10 years. I was employed by Ellsworth before RSU and I was optimistic for, at first about the partnership. However, it has made me feel unappreciated, unworthy, and devalued as a teacher. I feel unappreciated due to the fact that I am always being monitored by the higher administration, not my direct principal. 
constantly having to implement new programs to teach, learn, and take on these various programs all at once because someone thinks it is the new best thing. And never receiving recognition for improving student growth or spending countless hours learning these new programs, I feel completely depleted. I feel unworthy and devalued due to the fact that my salary has not increased much since I've been employed by the RSU. In 10 years of teaching, I make only $34,000 for all the time and effort and work that I do. It is a slap in the face. I did not go into teaching, however, to make lots of money, but at least enough money to make a living. I love kids and want to teach, encourage, and inspire them, but it's becoming very difficult when I can barely pay my bills and have to juggle two additional jobs just to help support my family. I have never had a feeling of doubt as a teacher. I have always been confident in my job and have always, always loved it. I do not have that love anymore due to all the mandates and requirements coming from the central office. When we stood alone as Ellsworth, we the teachers had a say and our opinion mattered. It was never, you will do this, this is a requirement. I am more concerned about the education of our children. I feel like I am, all I am doing is treading water with everything that keeps coming my way. Every professional day is something new I have to implement. I know that all these constant changes are taking away from the education of our children. If we do not withdraw from the RSU, I know that myself and others will be looking elsewhere for employment because it feels we are doing a disservice to our children. It feels as, a, as if our experience, expertise, and first-hand knowledge of our students is being ignored. I want the pride our teachers, I want the pride of our teachers restored and to make a true, true difference to our students, not a calculated difference. Thank you, a concerned teacher. Good evening. My name is Jill Cohen. I am a resident of Ellsworth and I am an RSU 24 employee. Um, more importantly than a resident of Ellsworth, I am the mother of a wonderful high school student who many of the teachers here have taught. And I've been hearing a lot about how this isn't about taxes, but let's talk about money. And I've heard a lot about how it's about getting back that feeling that we had. I want to talk about Jessica. I want to talk about my daughter and the education that she's getting. I want to talk about what happens when she graduates from high school in 2016 and college in 2020 and goes out into this ever globally interdependent technology-based society and has to find a job. And that the federal government and the state of Maine recognizes that what she needs to know and do to be able to have a job has changed from what existed in what I've heard other people in the past few meetings reference. I've heard references to school board meetings in the 1970s and the 1980s, but the demands for Jessica, who's going to kill me for mentioning her name, by the way, um, have dramatically changed. I've heard talk about curriculum, going back to what happened prior to consolidation, and I taught at Ellsworth for five years prior to consolidation. It's not the same. And it wasn't the RSU that mandated it. It happened in 2000 with no child left behind, and it's evolved on a federal level and approved by the states. It's not the RSU. It's external forces saying what we do with our kids needs to change because we need to make sure that they're prepared in the future. And it's a disservice to my daughter to have a conversation about money for her future. It's a disservice to assuring that what I really want is not that my money goes to her, but that my money goes to the best education possible that embraces the best research, the best materials, the best trained teachers, so that when she graduates in 2020, 
she's not struggling for a job, that she has so many doors open to us, that she has these experiences through the Visual Performing Arts Academy. If she chooses HCTC and wants to go into one of the new programs, that she can access it. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, how do you know? How do you know what's being offered is going to take care of my daughter? I do know that now. Because the federal government and the state government have assured that through their partnerships that she is ready. Now that's not saying that Ellsworth, if they withdraw, will not get there. I don't know. None of us do. Because nobody in this room has the authority to make that decision. She's got two years and three quarters left of high school. And you are asking me as a voter to entrust you with the most precious thing that I have on this planet for an experiment. Using something, it is, I'm sorry, because you, we don't know. We did it all along. We did it all along before education, again, not by the RSU, changed. We now have to adhere to the Common Core State Standards. There is no choice in that. We have to adhere to standardized testing. And I will say, again, there are teachers in this room who, if my daughter was in here, she would say they were her favorite. And how you touched her life, I am forever in your debt. But that doesn't mean she's going to be ready for 2020. Because it is coming. It absolutely is. And I can't. You, you can make that choice for your child. But I need to say, I can't with mine. I want her to have the best education. I want her to have the best resources. I want her to be trained on what's there. And it is hard for teachers right now. I work for the RSU. It is really hard. It is a significant shift in a philosophical, foundational approach to education. But local control cannot overturn that. Because the state and the federal government says you can't. You can't vote away the common core. You can't vote away standardized testing. There will always be something for accountability. That's not the RSU's decision. That's the federal government's. There are some schools who have rejected that. And they've lost their funding. So even though this isn't about taxes, if you want to look at it in terms of finances, if you reject those programs, you reject some of the funding that is necessary to keep these costs down. But again, it's not the money. And it's not how much say. It's about truly what our children are receiving that are in schools now and what's best for them. And that's why I'm asking that people consider voting no. I'm asking for people to vote no. I understand the other argument, but as a mother, She's too valuable. She needs to be prepared for the future. She needs the skills, or she's not going to succeed. And that's scary as a mom, because all I want is the best. Thank you. Great. I want to speak quickly. I'm a mother too. Um, I have one student at Ellsworth Elementary School and one at Ellsworth Middle School. Can you both have name, please, for the Sarah Domrecki, Kazmerzak. Thank you. Um, they both have a great education. I just have two questions. Um, one, what happened to the field trips? Um, my son, when he was in kindergarten through third grade, they were modest field trips, but they got to leave town. And he went to Acadia National Park, they went to a nature preserve in Holden, they went apple picking. My daughter started kindergarten in 2010, and I don't know if they've left town. I mean, they, the, the people in town have been great. The fire department has welcomed them and given them a great field trip. 
Maine Shellfish Company is welcoming them, giving them a great field trip. But why can't you go to Acadia National Park? Why can't they just, you know, do something a little bit more than just what we have in town? They didn't have the money. Um, and I think that's part of an education. I don't think Ellsworth by itself would have let that happen. Secondly, just, just one example of something where there's not enough money, the art teacher. Um, why don't we have a full-time middle school art teacher? We have several hundred students. Um, Part-time art teacher with, you know, 40 minutes of art instruction a week. I was an art teacher. And I'm sure that's just one of many examples of a situation where we don't have the funding. Ellsworth has the money, but it's not going maybe where we need it to go. And I'm a mother who would like to see that. Monty Lacase, I've been around a long time. <laughs> We moved here from Boston. My husband came here as a doctor at the hospital. And before we left Boston, a lot of people said, you're going to have to send your kids to private school because schools in Maine are lousy. Well, we came here because it was a small community where we liked the size of the hospital after my husband was in a thousand bed hospital as a doctor. And he was ready for something a lot better life than that. I uh, had taught in schools of nursing in Boston, and I agreed I was ready to leave. We found a community that was welcoming. We had an identity. We didn't do anything spectacular. But we became involved in the schools when I started having one child right after another. I ended up with three of them all under three, year, three and a half years old. But one of the things that I found was that you have personalized education in Ellsworth, and you had it then. And if we wanted to make appointments seeing our teachers, that was possible. We uh, had contact with the school board. I was on the school board nine years. Um, I taught in the schools here. And I found that the contact with the parents is just as much of an education <coughs> as our children being educated in schools. You have an obligation to have parents know what the common core of education is. Why do the teachers either using workbooks again. You know, I thought those were out of style, but apparently some of the new rules and regulations have necessitated that. My feeling is that in school board meetings, we've had 40 and 50 people when we had some good argument going between school board and us and <laughs> people who were upset with us. <laughs> if teachers all came one night, I'm scared to death I was the chairman then. And <laughs> Oh boy, they're going to give me a run for my money. They were fabulous. We listened to them. They had, they had very good points. A lot of it had to do with salaries, etc. When I heard that uh, um, our kids' teachers had to have their salary held for three years or whatever period it was, uh, while we have other teachers getting theirs raised, I can understand why that is probably a good idea. But what about the teachers who, in this group, while this was going on here and elsewhere, were ready to retire? What about the fact that um, if, as we have teachers move in and out of the system, you go to the marketplace to look for new teachers. And if there's a salary rate that's much lower, or lower even, how are we going to compete in that field? Uh, of, of new teachers and talented teachers. And we've, al we've always had talented teachers here. I've been very proud of the education my kids got. I'm not going to tell you about it because then I'm bragging. But we <laughs> didn't accomplish it. Ellsworth did. The community did. The teachers did. The principals did. The superintendent did. All these people are important. Now, Ellsworth is big. I think it's big compared to Boston is. But, and we have business is moving in and we're growing. It's a dynamic process. So education's got to be a dynamic process. We have to grow. We should have teachers who are getting educational programs. We ha should have parents who know all about the federal government regulations, how that impacts what your kid has when the child comes home from school and asks questions about, you know, my granddaughter said to me, this, I'm already into grandchildren. Um, <laughs> why I'm studying decimals again. Well, there's probably a good reason for it. I'm not, I'm not in, informed on why they're going to do that. But if you have a city this size, and we can afford to have our own system, 
and we can afford to have school board meetings again, and we can afford to educate our parents about what's going on in your children's education program, what's going on with your teachers. If you have contacts so that you can go into Mr. Newitt's office and say, I need to see Mr. Newitt to the secretary in the next day, isn't that going to be a more positive environment for Ellsworth's education program? I have no idea about the RSD. I, I wrote in my letter to the editor that I have no qualms with the RSU. It was hard to set up, and I, come on, I, yeah, I really commend those people who put it together. But we are moving forward with a number of people. Look at the Jackson Lab that's coming into Lowe's. I used to say in high school, boy, when I was teaching there, I would love to have those parents because they're parents who are people who want you to improve your system. They did that at our harbor. I, I worked with students at Mount Desert Island High School. We, and I had high school students here, went to, to uh, Mount Desert Biological Lab in Jackson's Lab. You can open up all these things if you've got people in your system who have time to do it. We have usually had very supportive school board members. They're community members. They had to be educated too. Now, I know that the RSU is, is probably doing the best it can, but it needs to be ready to have Ellsworth asking for more, a better system of evaluating the situation the teacher's in, a better system of looking at what the principals feel. And when I heard somebody say that <coughs> this teacher didn't feel comfortable coming and talking, well, I guess probably I don't blame the teacher. However, I'm retired, nobody can get at me, and I'm too old to bother with anyway. So, <laughs> what I say is, I, I really want to get back to a feeling that if at my age I walked into the school system and said I'm not really very happy with happening to my granddaughter, my darling, we do that anyway, but you know that I could do it. Mm. And to go all the way to Sullivan or, and maybe that sounds selfish, I don't mean that I'm not concerned about all those other municipalities in the RSU. I am, I'm concerned about all students, I've been a teacher. And so I just hope everybody thinks about it carefully before they pay too much attention to uh, some of the less important things. Um, taxes are important, I agree, but education is more important than taxes. And I'm not a great big spender, I'm, I'm a little conservative. I was on the board of Kenny, he was not in <laughs> uh, good evening. I'm Sharon McIntyre, a former teacher. I taught here in Ellsworth for 38 years. Uh, this is my third year of freedom, and I'm enjoying it. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm here to speak about uh, withdrawal from the RSU. Schools are about people. And uh, I was involved not only in the classroom but uh, with the Teachers Association and I had lots of running with the Ellsworth School Board. Uh, and I must say, it wasn't always perfect but there was never a time, not ever, that I didn't think that the school board had the best interest of the kids in Ellsworth, the same as we did, the teachers. It was, it was a, a position of trust, I think, and respect. And I think that that's really, really, really important. You would go to the board, sometimes it would be something that would be parent generated. And the teachers would pick up on that and you go to the school board. And I remember um, a couple of times bringing that issue to the city council. And so the, they were Ellsworth people with Ellsworth problems, Ellsworth concerns, and we took care of them. And there was mutual respect. I really enjoyed that. I knew them. They knew me. I knew their kids. I knew the parents. We all did. And we lost it. Um, I, I don't mind going back to the 70s and the 80s and having school board meetings the way they used to be, if that's what it takes. I think we, I think we need it. It may be, may be lost to some, but I think we can get it back. When I went to the first RSU uh, teachers meeting, uh, board meeting, I, I went in, it was at the high school in the cafeteria. And I, 
I remember distinctly looking up, and there were three people over here I knew, and there were about ten people over here I didn't know. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. And guess what? I thought they aren't going to either. I don't. I think it matters. Local control matters. We're Ellsworth. I don't want to deny anybody anything, but I think we need to take back our schools. <clears throat> I've had, well, I bet 20% of the audience <laughs> are former <laughs> students. <laughs> I've had anyone who has a child up there, had them, rebels. I've had Dela cases, three kids. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. That's okay. I'm sorry. But the three people in the front row, I've had them. They know me. And I think it's important to take back that local control. It matters. It really matters. Thanks. Mm. And we still let you get up and speak, even though we know you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Paul Marcosian. I'm an Ellsworth resident. My wife and I moved here in 2006, um, a couple months before our son was about to start kindergarten, and we moved here from one of the outlying communities in what is now the RSU. We chose Ellsworth. We could have moved to anywhere um, within a pretty wide radius of this area. Uh, but we chose Elders, Ellsworth because of the quality and the character of the schools. And we really, we came here knowing that our son was going to start kindergarten in Ellsworth and he was gra going to graduate from high school in Ellsworth. He's in seventh grade now. He's about halfway through that journey. And, oh, and a year after we moved here, we were fortunate enough to have a second son who's now in first grade in Ellsworth. And the thing that I want to address tonight, the thing that, uh, one thing that concerns me very much is, and it's been, um, the issue, this topic was broached by Mrs. Sisson and another speaker, is, is the morale of the teachers. And I've spoken with a lot of teachers. I've gotten to know many teachers in our time here, not just teachers of my own kids, but other teachers in the school. And everyone who's been willing to talk to me about the RSU has expressed disappointment, unhappiness, um, with the way that the structure of the RSU and the process of the RSU, the way it, the, 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 the impact it has on how they do their jobs. I haven't spoken to anyone who's happy about being in the RSU. I haven't spoken to any elsewhere teachers who are. Um, and to me, that raises a big red flag, because when you have an organization that is suffering from the morale problem like that, and you have dedicated, experienced, outstanding, passionate individuals who, are, who have been doing a great job and are committed to continue to do a great job, and yet they're feeling this distraught in this way, you gotta step back and say, what's, what's going on here? What's wrong? How, how did this happen and how can we fix it? And I think, I think that the way the RSU operates is, is a big factor in creating that, that situation. Um, I, I understand about how the world has changed and the state and the, and the federal government have imposed um, a lot of um, the common core thing and all, the, and all these other things. And I, and I think that our teachers fully understand that too. And I think they embrace it. I mean, we, the, we do need that for the world that we are now in. And it, it's going to make it so that when a student, a family moves here from Texas or Florida or, Ma or Massachusetts, they're going to be able to come into the school system where they already have a lot of the same knowledge and, and they've learned a lot of the same things. But there's ways to teach that common core where you can also allow the, the individual teachers who have particular strengths and particular passions and particular interests to incorporate that into the way they teach those concepts and, 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 and get the, the students up to speed. When my uh, oldest son Beckett was on the last day of second grade, he got to meet his third grade teacher. And he came home that day and he said, I said, so, so how was it? Did you meet your teacher? He goes, yeah, daddy, and guess what? I said, what? He goes, we're gonna learn yoga. <laughs> and as far as I knew, this, 
this kid, this boy had never heard of yoga, or never, we certainly never talked about it. He was so excited about it. Why was he so excited? Because his teacher was excited. That's something that she was excited. She just, she was able to infect all the kids with excitement about yoga. And she used yoga to, um, in a lot of different subject matters throughout that school, uh, that school year, his third grade school year. And, and he learned some of the things that he learned because yoga was part of it because that was something she cared about. Now, if it was a different teacher, it could have been something else that she could have incorporated into that. Um, you know, we used to have um, the med everyone, people here remember the medieval fair? Who misses the medieval fair? We can't do the medieval fair anymore because as far as I understand, I don't really understand this, but the exp explanation I've been given is because the other schools in the RSU can't do it so that we're not allowed to do it. That's another example of, I mean, you can still adhere, to, you can still achieve all the common Chris stuff, but why can't we do some of these things that were part of the character of Ellsworth School? For 20 years, we had a medieval fair. There were, there were kids whose parents went through it, and you know, in seventh grade, you did the medieval fair, and you, all the other kids in all the lower grades got to go and, and anticipate when they were going to be in seventh grade. Well, my son's in seventh grade now, and guess what? He's not doing the medieval fair this year, even though it was a big part of his experience uh, growing up in Ellsworth. Um, there's other things I could mention too, but I, we've already, I'm running out of time, and we've already had some other, the letter that was read from the teacher and Mrs. Sisson's remarks, so I'll just leave it at that. But I think that we have to think about, I don't care about the taxation issues. I, I, I'm, I'm more concerned about the morale of, of the teachers. Thank you. For the next speaker, about how many other people are going to want to speak tonight? <laughs> okay, if, if that's all, then we'll keep going on the five minute limit. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Alexander, and I grew up in Ellsworth. I graduated from Ellsworth High School. I have a student as a freshman there now. Um, and I'm in the community a lot, and in speaking to parents and citizens, I hear a lot of how the teachers feel. Um, and since the vast majority of them don't feel like they can express their opinions without repercussions, uh, a recent survey was sent out. Um, it's brief. It was anonymous. Um, this was in particular given to the K-8 um, Ellsworth teachers. And a lot of those teachers have years of experience. Um, and I'll go over it very briefly, but it does speak volumes. Um, the first question was, how long have you been teaching or working in the RSU 24 slash Elzer School Department? Um, less than one year was 9.5%. One to five years had been worth 38.1%. Six to 15 years was 42.9%. And 16 to 25 years was 9.5%. Again, this is of the ones that took the survey. Um, has the quality of education improved since the implementation of RSU 24? Zero percent answered yes. Eighty-three point three percent answered no, and eight a sixteen point seven percent answered about the same. Compared to the Elzer School Department, is staff morale in the RSU twenty-four better, worse, or about the same? And this doesn't go by percentages because everyone was allowed to comment. Um, there was one comment that was the same. All of the others were worse, much worse far worse, um, it goes on and on. Number four was communication between staff and administration is better, worse, or about the same. And again, it's not by percentages, it's by answers. One was the same. One was not sure, and the rest were worse, much worse. And one teacher actually responded with, I hardly know who my superintendent is and almost never see my building administrator. It's like we're just another number in a giant corporation, and I'm positive that my superintendent has no idea who I am or what contributions I've made to the families of Ellsworth. And the last uh, question was, how important do the employees um, at RSU 24 make you feel, and this was intended for central office? Um, zero was extremely important. Extremely important was zero percent. Very important was zero percent. Moderately important was 11.1%, slightly important, 44.4%, and 38.9% answered not at all important. Um, they might just be a fraction of what we were able to, to get, 
prior to tonight's meeting, but I do feel it speaks volumes since we rarely hear, as Paul uh, mentioned, positive comments about the morale. I um, am Marcia Jude, a parent. Um, a little bit of what I want to talk about tonight is my experience in high school, I guess, so I can bring us up to the 90s. Um, I was born and raised in Ellsworth, and I am a proud graduate of Ellsworth High School. I was taught by my parents, teachers, principals, and school board members how to be involved in my community. As a student, I was allowed to express my opinions and ideas and encouraged to participate in the development of our learning community. As I reflect on the teachers, principals, and educational experience I had as a student, I am realizing more than ever just how much pride and confidence was instilled in me. My husband and I chose to live in this area and raise our children in this community so we could provide that same experience for our children. It saddens me to great lengths to see how the loss of control in our schools has largely decreased the sense of pride in our schools. My children are in first and fourth grade, therefore my experience has been primarily at the elementary level. I have heard from many parents and teachers about the negative atmosphere, the levels of frustration and disconnect at the high school, but I had not been able to get a student's perspective until last night. I was at a soccer game talking to a parent and his daughter, who's a sophomore at Ellsworth High School, and the experience they have had. Now as a parent, I most definitely could relate to the emotion and passion of the father's frustration because he cannot get help for his daughter that he wants due to the large number of new teachers and the lack of help from the administration. The classrooms are in chaos and as a result, his daughter did not receive the proper instruction in mathematics for her freshman year. But what hit home most to me and prompts me to share with the audience tonight is the look of fear, confusion, and frustration in his daughter's eyes. She went on to tell me students feel lost, that no one cares, and that they're giving up. Students do not have a sense of security or pride. RSU 24 does not only have two failing high schools, they also have students feeling that RSU 24 has failed them. As I have reflected on the conversation and keep seeing the look in that young lady's eyes, I realize I too have been feeling lost in a community I was raised. Frustrated with the chain of communication and the number of policies one needs to be familiar with. When once we had open and welcome forums of communication at all levels, and I also am greatly concerned and have fear for the future education of my children. I at one time did receive support from a previous, our previous RSU 24 superintendent, and I had to face a newly formed RSU board of 14 members, which was extremely intimidating, but I had encouragement from the superintendent to help me. Last year, I had an issue where I had to meet with the current superintendent, a meeting I thought would be able to express my concerns and ask for direction. It turned into an opportunity for the superintendent to inform me the results of her decision and why. I left feeling that my five-year-old son, before even entering RSU 24, was not a student. He was a number in a community that I loved and never ever thought would happen. I did contact three board members, all from different communities, and received the answer from each member, and it was all the same answer from all three. There is nothing we can do. We support the decision of the superintendent, and it would be a waste of your time to come to a school board meeting. I realize difficult decisions need to be made, and they're not always going to be in my favor. Not every high school student feels the same or has the same experience. However, RSU 24 has been not, not been able to adequately provide the needs of all the communities that belong. That same look of despair is also evident and made very clear tonight in our teachers and, and also some of our administrators. That hasn't been much mentioned yet, but it's there. No one goes into teaching for money, 
And to say the teachers are upset about money is false. Our teachers fight for their students. They have worked hard to support RC24. Now they're feeling lost, helpless, and no one's listening. I also would like to take this opportunity to thank the leaders of Ellsworth who have come forth to fight for local control and all the time and effort that you have put into this withdrawal of the last 18 months. Um, you have shown me and reminded me what I was taught throughout my educational experience, which many are in this room tonight, were role models for me 20 years ago, and they are continuing to be my role model now. And it's shown me in these leaders that I respect, that are inspiring me, that if you are given encouragement and support, you can have strength and confidence. It has been stated that there has been a societal shift. People are not as involved face-to-face -face meetings, participate in local meetings. I realize this has been discussed a lot. I prepared this um, last night. I think a lot of us were up until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, this is not true. As citizens of Ellsworth, we stand behind our teachers and ensure that our children are receiving the best education in our schools. At these times of big government, with federal and state government putting more and more expectations on our schools, teachers, and students, it is more important than ever to direct our focus to local control. With a school board 100% devoted to our communities needed, where parents, teachers, and students feel they have a voice that will be heard and get pride back in our schools. Let us help our students feel proud and confident that they graduated from Ellsworth High School and that they were provided the proper education to fulfill their future aspirations. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> My name is Ann Dale, and I just wanted to add, I'm a retired teacher. I taught 30 years, grade four here in Ellsworth. I loved it. It was a privilege. And uh, I loved every minute of it. I really did. I just wanted to say that I never went to school board meetings too often because the school board members came to us, huh? They came to us. They were in the schools. They were reading with the kids. They were having lunch with the kids. Uh, we were having educational conversations about what was going on in the curriculum. They were the parents of the children in my classroom. So there's that high morale, that good feeling, that great communication that builds community. And um, I just really would like to see Ellsworth go back to being its own little town with a local control and having those good relationships again. So where people do know your name, you know. Um, when I think of all those school board members, when I left, I thought, well, they probably didn't even know I was here, but that's okay because I was here for the children. So anyway, um, just to keep that simple, uh, everybody's echoed what I've already thought in my heart tonight, but I would just say that, yes, uh, we need to take the local control back. And just imagine school board members who you knew and loved, who were in town, sat in front of your church, scout leaders, whatever. They were in the building, reading to the kids, eating lunch with the kids, being there. And uh, I want that back for the educators of Ellsworth and for the kids and parents. Thank you. Uh, my name is Fred Meyer. <clears throat> I'm probably in the minority here because I really don't know which way I was going to vote. I thought I did until I got here. It's interesting from I've been in Ellsworth since, since May. I've had a granddaughter graduate from Ellsworth High School several years ago. I won't mention any names, so she'll kill me. <laughs> she's going to an Ivy League school, and she's excelling down there. And to hear her words, it's despite her education at uh, Ellsworth High School. Uh, you've had a failing principal that has, has been thrown out of office. Uh, I saw today it was in the newspaper today, they saw the SAT scores and how well uh, Ellsworth you know, uh, is doing versus the state of Maine. And it's pitiful. Less than 50% or 46%. I can't believe these things are 46 or 48% of our students are not excelling, but what, qualified, or I forget exactly what the category is, they can get by in a particular subject. There's a lot of work that has to be done. <clears throat> I came here thinking that RSU was maybe the way to do it, but it appears as though the way they handle this, the, um, the certain districts, it's already, it's, you know, it's a function of getting directives from, uh, uh, from governments telling you what to do, 
they tend to get slammed down on teachers of doing the work, uh, and then RSU gets blamed for it. Uh, I think RSU has a lot to do. <coughs> Ellsworth has, should have a bigger input into or concern over what the teachers are doing. I don't know what what they're doing in other other, uh, other communities, whether or not they feel the same, feel as though they're being treated the same way. But I think there's problems with the RSU, but I don't think going Ellsworth alone, uh, people are sitting here, uh, like watching the Andy Griffith show. Remember how we used to go down and fish? We had a wonderful time, and Barney Fife was a very friendly policeman. I think a lot of this recollection of how nice things were in Ellsworth before um, has gone by the board because society has changed. Demands have changed. The school has got to uh, produce uh, a better education for our kids. And I have some grandchildren who are becoming school age next year. <clears throat> but uh, as much as I like to throw all, all the blame on the, on the, on the RSU, when I hear people come up here, I mean, just one, one example, and I'm sorry to pick on you. You know, we put up this uh, uh, track around the, uh, in, the, in the high school, and other schools are using it. How come we had to pay for all of it? And it finds out that we never asked for the money for, from the RSU to help us share the costs. So it's not all the RSU problems. It's, it's Ellsworth's problems. I think if as much energy was spent over the last 18 months trying to work out what's happening with RSU and the community, how they could work together, uh, I think we'd all be better off. But um, it's, it's been interesting to come here and hear the pros and cons, or the pro, pro, cons. Um, but uh, I think there's work that has to be done on, on both sides. And for the teachers not to feel appreciated, a lot of that's got but done on, this, on the local level. That's not an RSU problem. I mean, entirely, that's people management within your own school. And not to know who your superintendent is or have your superintendent not know you, well, that, that shows there should be some better communication back and forth between uh, the administration and the teachers. But uh, I still don't know which one I'm going to vote. I don't, uh, the cost savings, I think, are there in the long run, but I don't think Ellsworth's getting it. <coughs> I think getting the short trip to it. Then again, Ellsworth contributing to his own problems. I, uh, I think it has to be prob uh, If Ellsworth does go separate, there's got to be a lot more parental community involvement and professional involvement within the school to get it up to speed. Because, well, I come from a school district in in Wisconsin, and well, it was very highly rated, but it was just a town several thousand more people than, than, uh, than Ellsworth, but it's getting a little bit shut up. <laughs> Good evening, folks. My name is Kelvin Oat. I'm a taxpayer. Uh, Ms. Cohen, I share your report. Yeah, Ms. Cohen. I'm right here. Outstanding ah. what you said. I share your sentiment. I have a son coming up. I have a son that just graduated. I have a daughter graduated in 2007. I have two other sons that may be coming to Ellsworth. A lot of things have been said tonight, passionate arguments uh, with facts and factual arguments with some passion. And these uh, arguments are going to decide the fate of our children. When I say our children, I mean collectively in the future. The old saying goes, it takes a village. Ms. Lucas called today business. I'm sorry, Ms. Lucas. My children are not a business. Uh, they are our future. Now, I don't want to cast stones. And I apologize if that sounded like I was casting stones. Uh, I'm not casting stones at you, ma'am. But I do believe that the, the RSU has grown so much so that it has become a business. It has become a corporation. And the bottom line has been talked about so much. I don't want to talk about money. I'm going to be paying taxes for the rest of my life. <laughs> the only way I'm going to get out of paying taxes is to go back to Afghanistan, and then I won't have to pay taxes for however long I'm in country. <laughs> so I hope not to be paying taxes. I hope to be paying taxes for quite a long time. <laughs> 
when Ms. Lucas finished up, she said that if the city of Ellsworth takes back its schools, she fears for the students because their education is going to have to be put on hold, I believe. If I'm, not, if I'm misquoting you, please tell me. Until Ellsworth catches up or gets their planning down pat. That sounds an awful lot like the biggest kid on the team saying, I'm taking my ball and going home. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the school is still elsewhere. All the planning that's gone in so far is going to translate over. And there will be maybe a hiccup. But I'm looking in here and I see a lot of teachers. And I go into schools and I see these same teachers. And I see them under the most stressful conditions that you can imagine. Bomb threats, et cetera, lockdowns. And I see them perform perfectly because they are intelligent, because they love our kids. You're right. You don't become a teacher for the money. You become a teacher because you have a passion. You develop that passion early on. And it, it translates through the years. I am so sorry Grayson is not going to be in your classroom in fourth grade. I look, yes, ma'am. <laughs> But, <laughs> however, I am hopeful that Grayson will be in. Oh, was I not supposed to say Grayson's name? Sorry. I'm hopeful about Grayson's future in this school system because the teachers that are here are capable, fully capable. I have no worries about that. My concern is we bring the schools back to local control. Now, what does local control mean? Am I on a power trip? No, I'm not on a power trip. But it takes a village, not 10, not 12 villages, not a bunch of people who don't even know who my son's teacher is. <laughs> Robert Frost once said, yes, Tammy, I'm going to use it. Robert Frost said that <laughs> the ability to, uh, the education is the ability to listen to almost anything without losing your temper or your self-confidence. Now, everybody's been great here tonight. I, I almost regret that there weren't more people on the side of the RSU here so that we could hear their voice. Because I've defended the right for people to be able to voice their opinions, and I think it's important for that to happen. But I will say this much. The money that was saved, saved, and the money that was spent, the $6 million that Timmy put out there, that was dispersed throughout the RSU, how many more programs could we have put in the Ellsworth school systems with that $6 million? How many more teacher salaries could we have boosted with that $6 million? How many more nationally renowned instructors and teachers from places, I mean schools like Harvard, for instance? How, could, how many of them could we have brought in with that money that's been put into a pool? Let's get back to putting that money into the Ellsworth school system. <coughs> Let's build this school system up to make it a stellar performer in the state of Maine. And not just another part of a cog in a corporation. I said it before and I'll say it again. My children are not in products. Your children are not in products of a corporation. And if you don't have children in the school system, that's fine. Because the children that are coming out of these schools, they're going to be our leaders. They're going to be the ones sitting up here. They're going to be the ones in Congress and in Washington. <coughs> the joke goes around right now that, that growing up, I was told that I could be president. Anybody could be president. And he said, well, yeah, now we see that's true. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't you want the best president that you could get? And wouldn't you be willing to sacrifice and do what it takes to roll up your sleeves and go to make sure that the president was properly educated in a community that actually cares about the students and not the bottom line. Thank you. <clears throat> like two more. My name is Sue Layton and all set. My name is Sue Layton. I'm a former teacher in Ellsworth and I am currently an assistant director here, perhaps the one that Mrs. Bowles referred to that we don't need anymore. 
Um, that's okay because after nights like tonight, Walmart looks better all the time. But anyway, um, I am a parent of three children. My youngest daughter, Kelsey, graduated from Ellsworth High School this past year, that failing high school that a number of people have referred to. Um, she graduated in the top of her class. She was a leader in her school. She was a leader in her church. She was a leader in lots of other places, and she's a leader in the college that she is in. She was accepted to all of the colleges she applied to, early acceptance to a number of them. So we really need to think about this when we're saying failing schools and you know all of this stuff that is really convenient to throw around at times like this, okay? Um, you know, I did not plan to speak tonight. I did not stay up all night last night thinking of this. I just wrote a few notes as I was sitting there because, you know, some things that people said sort of um, struck a chord in me that I felt I needed to speak to. Um, as a parent, I was never, ever in Ellsworth Middle School or in Ellsworth High School refused to see in the office if I needed to see anybody in the office, if I needed to see a teacher. Never, ever was I told you cannot see that person, ever. Um, that's a choice. If you want to see them, if you want to know them, you will know them. Our community has not changed. Ellsworth is Ellsworth. And if you want to go in your schools, you will go in your schools. And you will know the people that are there. And you will know the people that take care of this district. It's a choice. Um, I work in all the schools in this district, from one end to the other. And it, again, is a choice about whether this is a corporation or a community. Because I know the teachers' names in all of the schools. I know the ed techs in all of the schools. And I know the bus drivers, and I know the custodians, and I know the kids. Because I choose to. That is my choice. And so it's very frustrating for me to sit here and say, I don't know anybody. I don't know. I'm not welcome. That's your choice. You can be welcome if you want to be welcome. We hear a lot about morale in schools. There are huge, huge requirements placed on our teachers today. Yes, some of them are from the RSU because we want to be the best. We want our kids to go to whatever colleges, to whatever programs, to military service. We all want them to be the best they can be. You know, I'm tired of this we, they game. I'm really tired of it. We spend a lot of energy on this, and it's ridiculous, quite frankly. It, it just, the morale is like this because people are playing this game all the time. You know, Ellsworth versus others. It doesn't have to be that way. It truly doesn't. It's a choice. I think there is huge value in being able to share experiences with people that are outside of our cozy little nest that we have in our community schools. Community schools absolutely have a place and they're a wonderful thing. My kids were products of them. That doesn't have to go away. But we need to think about that and think about what is it that's happening that we can change. It doesn't have to go away by breaking apart the RSU. I think we can do great things for kids by working together and hearing what other people's experiences are. There's great value in that. I had a lot of questions coming here. I still don't have answers to any of my questions. I know that I you know, voted on a ballot that said no taxpayer money would be spent on this process, and a lot of taxpayer money has been spent on this process. It's taken a lot of energy and a lot of time away from kids. And it needs to be done. It just really does. Um, we haven't heard how are we, what is going to be the budget? How are we going to build a school system in less than a year? What is going to happen in that time? We haven't heard any of those things. The requirements aren't going away. We, you know, I, I fear, I really fear for what is going to happen if Ellsworth does withdraw. Because we've heard a lot of emotional stories and we've heard a lot of personal comments tonight. Less than a year, you have to build 
a school system. The requirements, all of those things, people talked about the pressures people are under, those aren't going to get better by having to do that. We can't go back to where we were before with Ellsworth because everything has changed, not because the RSU has changed, but because the world has changed. And that's where we have to go with that. You know, I think the RSU has done a really good job with streamlining a lot of things and cutting out the fat in budgets. I truly do, which makes me very fearful for teachers and for kids because we are going to lose more state subsidy. We know Ellsworth is becoming a minimum receiver. That means no more of that money. And so when that happens, you cut two things. You cut teachers, staff, and you cut programs. The money's not going to come out of nowhere. If Ellsworth stays in the RSU, there'll be a cushion for that. There will be some room. And I really, I truly, and you know, I, I'm not just throwing that out there. I'm very fearful of what is going to happen to Ellsworth schools if they are on their own when they become minimum receivers in this community. That's not very far away. Um, so I just, you know, I hope that people think about this whole thing. I think it is what we make it. Um, I think we can continue forward and make it even better than it is. Um, it's not an easy job. But I believe if the energy in this room could be moved forward to um, improving education for kids, I think there'd be no stopping. Uh, thank you. Okay, two more, and then we're going to close the hearing. Uh, Ken Che, I was a member of the Withdrawal Committee with Mark and Don. Michelle and John Moore, and I did serve several uh, terms on the Elson School Committee. And unlike Kelvin and some of the other prior speakers, I do have concerns about the budget. Uh, spent a fair amount of time looking over the expenditures of the RSU, a lot of information from the finance director and Elson. I'm convinced that the first year is going to be a challenge because there are some uh, expenditures in that withdrawal agreement that are going to be one time expenditures. I'm also convinced that going forward, the city of Elspeth can run a very financially successful school system within the same parameters that the RSU is currently spending. It is going to require a dedicated school committee and it is going to require a dedicated city council. But I don't think we're going to spend additional funds <coughs> to run our own school system. That being said, what is more important is that we're going to have the opportunity to spend those funds as a locally elected school board and the city council wants to direct. Right now, that's not possible. Uh, yeah, maybe going back to the 1970s and 1980s is not possible, but getting control of your school systems is. Uh, there's nothing more important than the education of a child than getting the parents involved in that education. And it's very difficult for parents to feel that they're being heard when they go to a a Irish board meeting with 14 members on there. They may know one, they may know two, but they don't know the five members like they used to when Elsa had their own school board. Uh, I think we've got to go back to that, that old organizational structure. Uh, yeah, we do have to comply with the, the uh, common core standards that are in place today, dictated by the uh, state and the federal government. That doesn't mean that those standards cannot be enhanced and cannot be modified by a dedicated group of educators. And they're going to do that only with the encouragement of the elected school board within the city of Elta. They're going to find that very difficult to do, trying to comply with the directors of a 14-member board from towns that range all the way from arrival to Sioux Penn. I don't fault the uh, folks in the RSU right now that are, that are running it. The problem is we've got an organizational structure that is just geographically too large and too diverse for what traditionally has been done in this area. Uh, I don't know how far it is from arrival to the Ella Lewis School in Sioux Bend, but it's a long way. Uh, we need a, an organizational structure that takes into account Elsa, perhaps one or two adjoining towns for the, uh, the use of the central administration. But the policy-making board needs to be made up of parents and citizens of the city of Elton. 
that's why I became involved in this withdrawal effort. And I think it's extraordinarily important that uh, the voters return the control of the Elsa school system to an Elsa school board and the Elsa city council. Uh, that's my only comment. Uh, obviously, I'm, I don't have children in the school system. I have grandchildren in the system. And I, I tell you, I, I don't have a lot of complaints with what I see being done in the schools. But I do think that there needs to be improvements, and there, do needs, there does need to be more of an openness to get parents involved in the education of their children. And I don't see that happening with a, with a mega board of folks from uh, numerous towns and, and the current organizational structure that we have. So I would encourage voters to, to take their schools back and in terms of getting a, a system up and running in eight or nine months, a lot of that structure is there. What you're going to need more than anything else is parents of those, those students and those people that are here tonight speaking. You've got to vote and recruit folks to serve on your school board that are going to be like the dealer cases we spoke here previously. And if you get those people involved in a school board, you will have a school system that's responsive to the needs of your kids and it can be better than, than it's been previously. But your parents have got to be active, they've got to be concerned. I think that's going to be more of a challenge than getting a, uh, an organizational structure in place by uh, September of 2014. Thank you. Um, it's running late, so I would offer um, the RSU up to a five minute rebuttal if you'd like. Not necessary. Not necessary. I'll offer five minutes rebuttal to. Committee, whoever wants to take it. That's not your rebuttal, just uh, some time. Uh, closing, closing statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for your comments on the importance of your daughter to you. Everybody in this room that has children feels as strongly about their kids. I have no kids, but I do feel strongly about this community the education of this community and how it's handled. That is the personality of our future community. We talked about, uh, one lady spoke about her daughter that did very well, has gone on to a, a beautiful school, is the leader there. You know, those children don't need nearly as much instruction. They have the ability to get that out of the books and out of things themselves. They're hungry for that information. Those are the ones that are going to go to college. There are a lot of the students that are going to go to trade schools. We need trade schools. We need our children going to trade schools. They'll get an education there. Those two groups will probably seek their livelihood someplace else. I can tell you I think we've got enough lawyers in town, <laughs> doctors, etc. But what about the kids that are going to make it through high school, and worse, the kids that are not going to make it through high school? Don't they deserve the best in education that they can get? They're the ones that are probably going to be locked here, locked here in our community. Some of them not by choice. I talk to people that have never been out of Hancock County, and it's hard to believe, but there are people that have that situation. We keep talking about the dollars, and we've been kind of dubbed as looking to reduce tax dollars. It is not solved. What we're concerned about with the tax dollars is keeping them in Ellsworth so that the local control, the school board, can change education the best they can with the help of the teachers to improve the educational product that we put out here in Ellsworth. And I think we're at a critical point. Time-wise, we're in a real critical point. Because on November 5th, we've got to vote. And those that are familiar with the regulation understand that it took eight, 100, I think it's 187 votes to 170-some votes to put us into the RSU. On November 5th, we've got to have 50% of the last gubernatorial election come out and vote. 
That's 1,650 some votes. At that point, we need a simple majority. As we look around, there are a lot of people that have spoken positively about getting out, some that have spoken negatively. Everybody has their opinion. Get out and vote that opinion. On November 6, don't bish if you didn't vote. It is critical at this point. We, they talk, they. We have talked tonight about the mammoth job that is ahead of us and the additional pressures that are going to be here. You know, for the last four or five weeks, we've been holding meetings every week. And we've had 30, 40, 50 people at those meetings, fairly consistently. But what was really impressive to me is in the last few, we've had a lot of teachers. And I will tell you right now, if there are additional pressures coming up next year to try and switch this, they have the intestinal fortitude to buck up to those pressures. Because their heart is in it and they're good. And we can take this one back and we can create a school that we're proud of, that turns out a good education for all of the kids. If you're not concerned about taxes, you're not concerned about local control, and you're not concerned about quality education, vote now. But vote. If you are, I would encourage you to get out and vote yes on November 5th. I know we're going to be ending the meeting, etc. But if there's anybody that has not wanted to speak up, that has any questions, we'll stay later and answer some of those. There was one thing that was brought up right at the end, how much money this has cost. You know the group of us that have called ourselves uh, Citizens for Quality Education? I've had teachers given donations to us. I've had business people given donations to us. I've had individuals, not teachers, others that have given us dollars. We've raised well in excess of $5,000 from those donations. And I tried not to go to the big hitters in order to do that, because this needs to be a grassroots deal. The people that have worked countless hours to try and put things together, I thank you. And it's not just the stuff that was done on our committee. It's all of the things that have been done outside of that committee and will have to be done in the future. Thank you very much. Thank all of you. At this time, I'll close the public hearing and ask for an agenda uh, adjournment. Mr. Chairman, move to adjourn. Second. On that note, I want to thank everybody for your patience tonight. Uh, we've got a very good profile here. What makes us up here probably leaders of Ellsworth.